What's up, Disc Golfers? Disc Golf Chris here, and this is our second installment of the mini podcasts. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about out of print drivers. Specifically, I've got a crush right here. Uh, many of you may know that the crush has been taken out of print, uh, and that was my that was my it is my go-to driver. So, I uh, I wanted to share that with you because yeah, I feel it right here. Um, Anyone that's watching on YouTube or seeing a video, you see I'm my shirt and tie and a headset, so I'm I'm at work right now taking lunch. Uh, but hey, anytime is a good time for a disc golf conversation, wouldn't you agree? Um, if you're not watching the video, if you're just listening to the podcast, well, it might sound a little bit different because I'm at work and not in Rodney's awesome recording studio. Uh, so back on to the crushes. Uh, I'm going to try to focus less on the crush and talk about more uh, about the actual. Um, the what what happens when your favorite driver goes out of print um i actually let me first give you a little background on the crush i've been throwing a crush since i think the second year it came out so i've been playing disc golf for about 15 years and the uh the crush i think came out uh, maybe 2004 or so i was throwing a crush by 2005 uh back then it was elite z and then i think the esp plastic was released in 07, something like that, so uh, I upgraded to the ESP plastic after about a year or two, so I've been throwing an ESP crush for almost 10 years, maybe maybe 8 years now, and the ESP crush is my go-to driver. I do carry an Elite Z and a Pro D in my bag at all times, so you can see I'm very dependent on the crush. The crush was actually the first disc that I went out and researched. I looked at the flight pattern and I realized that's the flight I wanted. Of course at the time I was only a couple years in and it was way too big of a disc for me. I, I didn't take into account the, the speed, the power that you need to throw it, but I learned to throw the crush and it is uh, it is my go-to driver. Um, so most people I think that, are, that have a go-to driver, most people aren't concerned about their drivers going out of print. Um, I, actually, I saw it coming a couple years back, Rodney and I were talking and I had uh, I mentioned to him, you know, I've never seen a crush out in the wild. I've never seen anyone else throwing a crush on the course, and I've never found one on the course in all the years I've been playing. And that said to me, you know what, there's there's not much demand. So I, I, I had a feeling that it was going to eventually come, so I started stocking up over the last couple of years. Uh, which brings me to the the question I have for you. What do you do when your favorite disc goes out of print? Obviously, I took the approach where I'm going to buy as many as I can so that I'm set for the next 10 years. Uh, the obvious disadvantage to this is, well, there's two of them. One is the discs have a shelf life. So 10 years down the road, the crushes might not be very good anymore. I'm, I'm hoping that they have a 15, 20 year shelf life, but we'll see. Uh, the other disadvantage is if you end up switching drivers, you might have a whole stock of drivers that you're not going to be using. if so. Yeah, you know, I'm throwing the crush. I'm confident I will. But what happens if I switch to the surge? Well, then I have you know 20 some crushes that I'm never going to use again. But I was confident. Uh, so I want to know what your thoughts are. Have you ever had one of your favorite discs go out of print? Have you ever had one of your discs change? I, I think we'll talk more about this in uh, in our full our, our full podcast uh, that's coming up. But one disc that I used for many years was a, a Leopard. It was the Preberry Leopard. Uh, I lost that and I replaced it with uh, a new Leopard and it simply wasn't the same. Uh, so at that point I didn't have any on reserve so I couldn't stock up. I had I switched discs. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about that one later. Um, there was one disc, uh, the Storm, Discraft's Storm, they took out of print uh, a number of years ago. Uh, when I, I had researched that one, it looked like a disc I'd like, so I went out and bought one knowing that was going out of print, but I knew that was going out of print, so which is why I went and bought one. The Crush is really the only disc that I've been really attached to that I couldn't live without that has gone out of print, so I currently have 22 Crushes, and I have my 23rd on the way in the mail right now. Of course, one of those is uh, an Elite X, which was out of print years ago, so it's kind of collectible. I've got a first run. Actually, let me let me show you what I got here. I I brought a selection of some of my favorite crushes. Um, this one you can see that I'm holding. I lo I just love the colors on this one. Um, well, if you're listening to the podcast, you won't be able, you won't be able to see it, but if you're um, if you're watching the video, you can see 
orange disc with a dark shiny blue stamp. I love this one. This was actually a misprint that I got from Marshall Street. Um, so since some of you are listening to the podcast, I won't spend much time on it, but I do have a first run crush here. I'm not even going to take this one out of the bag. This is a first run Z crush. Uh, so I I might throw, I might break down and throw this one. This this was used. I, I got this one on eBay at some point. This was used, uh, but it's collectible, and I don't plan on throwing it much. But I might have to throw it just to say that I've thrown it. I think Rodney talked about collectible discs uh, during the last mini pod, so I don't really consider this part of my collection of throwable discs. I also have a first run ESP, which again I'll throw it once maybe, but that one's brand new, so I might not. Um, this one's actually in my bag. This is a maximum weight Z Crush uh, cool tie dye. Uh, I'm sorry, not tie dye stamp. It's dyed in a uh, yin and yang symbol uh, with pink, pink and yellow. Uh, this was one of my favorites, and this is my uh, this is my extreme hyzer disc. And then this one's pretty cool. This is just a, a cool dye job, red, yellow, and blue. I found actually I got that one on Amazon surprisingly for a good price but uh, my my favorite one my main driver right now actually matches my shirt doesn't it it's a somewhat of a light blue crush with or I guess they call it teal I don't think it's teal it doesn't have much green in it but it uh, also has that dark blue stamp on it Um, so enough showing you my discs but anyway beside those collectible discs I probably have about 23 I have about 20 crushes that I can throw but I want to know what you guys do, and girls too. What's everyone do? If if your driver goes out of print, are you going to stock up on it, or are you going to switch? Um, Rodney and I have talked a lot about being uh, about developing your, your disc golf game so that you can switch, throw any disc you need to. You know, we've um, we've a number of times have gone out with a bag full of new discs that we've never thrown before, and we're to the point where we can adjust pretty pretty quickly. But the thing is, I've been throwing a crush for 10, 10 or more years, so I'm not willing to switch. But I would like to know what everyone else would do. What would you recommend for me? I, I've made my decision, but I'd still be interested to hear in your recommendations for me. Um, a putter would be another one. A putter is very intimate for, for people. You use it on uh, just about every hole unless you have an awesome shot. Uh, and I know people are very attached to their putters. I'm very attached to my putter. I would be devastated if I lost my Rico. Difference is, I've thrown a, a wizard for years, so I could switch over to that, but I still love my Rico. Um, I, I mentioned before, I don't think most people are concerned about their discs going out of print because a lot of people throw more common discs. Do you have any discs that you're worried going out of print? What are your concerns, and what do you plan on doing about it? So, anyway, I. I, th- th- this was important to me. This is a big. This has a big f- impact on my disc golf game. I'm doing my best to uh, mitigate the impact, but I want to hear from you all. So, anyway, thanks for joining. Um, don't forget that uh, Patrick uh, from Zen Disc Golf has his second book out. His first book was Zen and the Art of Disc Golf. Second book is Discs and Zen. I've, I'm about. I'm probably about two thirds of the way through it. You know, in, intention is to read a couple chapters, put it down, and come back to it. I think it's it's definitely going to be worth your while. So go check that out. Uh, check out our, our blog, dgputheads.com, and uh, find us on Facebook. So thanks for joining, and don't forget, just throw.